player 2 has joined the game. All right, my turn. Time for Kevin's top 10 games of the year. I almost said week. week. I was like, well, Laura Croft Go is my number one game of the week. Before I get into it, I don't really have... Nothing to me felt worthy of being a honorable, uh, mention. honorable mention. If I played more of it, Telltale Batman might have made it. But again, it's like... I, it's 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 a game, but it's not really a game. You know, it's yeah. like... It's just so... It's hard to... We bought Battlefront 2. I haven't even played Battlefront 2. Like I'm glad I split the cost of that with the kids and wasted twenty five dollars. I'm like, I don't I don't know why I paid any money for this. Like I don't even I don't even want to play it. It's just I've heard so many bad things about it, but the kids love it. But they love anything. They yeah. <laughs> if it's Star Wars, they love obviously Last Jedi was the best movie they've ever seen, just like Justice League was the best movie they've ever seen. <laughs> just like uh Spider Man was the best movie they'd ever seen and yeah. so on and so forth. I do have a most disappointing game this year though. And I kind of feel bad saying this because I haven't gone back to it because after they've made a lot of changes, but in the state that it released, by far my most disappointing mm-hmm. game of the year, Super Bomberman R. Oh. I had, oh, what did you think it was? I thought you were going to say Street Fighter Five. No. Was oh, that last year? That was last year. That was oh, okay. six. I mean, 16. Um, so they've changed stuff? They've, they've, they've. Uh, nerfed the computer AI. Okay. They've added different modes. They've added different characters and all this stuff. They've done a lot to it. Is there a true but, single player mode in that? Yeah, it's stupid though. Like, I don't want to play it. But it's, does it look- it's not the traditional Bomberman. It's more like 3D. You, the, the camera angle goes down and, and it's just, you still play it on a grid, but it just, I, I tried it and I was like, this isn't, it's not fun. Hmm. It's not like that it's too hard or anything. It's just not fun. Yeah. But this was like, you've heard us talk, if you've been with us for a while, you've heard us talk about Saturn, Bomberman, and it was one of our favorite games growing up, definitely one of our favorite Saturn games. But I wanted this to recapture that, and it could have, and maybe it will now. But again, it's like when IGN scores a game, they score it at release. They don't go back, and every time there's an update, well, it went up from a 6 to a 6.5, you know? So as much as it hates me, it pains me to say this, uh, Super Bomberman R was my dis- most disappointing game of the year. Yeah. I had very high hopes for that game. Yeah. And then once I started playing it, I'm like, it's just, it's too hectic. It's too hard. It's just... The computer was has almost unkillable. Right. I, I do kind of want to go back and play now to see if it's yeah better, but... And shout out to Konami for doing free updates and everything. That's awesome. It's very unKonami like uh, But yeah, most disappointing game, Super Bomberman yeah. R. Number 10, it's an oldie, kinda, but it's a goodie made new again. No, I screwed that up. It's an oldie, but a goodie made new again. I don't know. (laughs) Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, damn it. Number 10, Mario Kart is Mario Kart to me. Like, I've never been the biggest Mario Kart fan. I never played Mario Kart 64 until we did it at Rec Room one night. I think, was was it with Jason and Brent? (sighs) Did we play that with them? Who do we play no, that I with? I think that was with Nick. With Logan, Nick maybe? And At- or maybe it was with Logan. Maybe it was Logan. Was here. Yeah. Um, I'm not good at that game. And Oh, and the joystick would only go... Like, the analog would only I, turn one way. I never... I don't like 64. So I've it never, controls weird. I just... I don't like... Everybody loves that game. Yeah. I think it's one of the worst, personally. But see, I don't like Super Mario Kart, the original. Because it's just like... It, if, if I played it more 20 years ago, I'd probably love it. I love the game. But that now I'm like... Out. I don't know what that was... But now I'm like, I don't I don't like this at all. It's not fun. I get the mode seven, everything. It looks great. At the time it would have been amazing. But again, we were Genesis kids. I think maybe I might have played it at Randy's or something. Tim Brent didn't had have it. It. I played it a Brent lot did. at Brent's, yeah. But and I played Mario Kart Mario Kart on the Wii a little bit. We didn't own it, but somehow we borrowed one from somebody or I played it at somebody's house or something. I was like, okay, now this is getting fun. The motion controls suck and they still suck in eight. I just don't like that. But then I was one of the like seven or eight people that owned a Wii U in America, and I got Mario Kart 8 on that, and I was like, first off, this is freaking gorgeous. Nintendo knows how to squeeze every ounce of power out of these games that they can. But then you go past that, and it was just pure fun. We had such a good time with it with on the Wii U. It was probably played that more than anything else on the Wii U. Uh, I mean, other than Twilight Princess, because it took me 40 hours to beat it, <laughs> but that doesn't count. But so much fun with it. So then when Switch gets announced... Zelda's a launch title, so Super Bomberman R. I'm like, well, I'm going to have two games to play. Awesome. Then April 
Mario Kart 8 comes out. I'm like, okay, you got me. I'll buy it again, whatever. It comes with all the characters, all the tracks, new characters. Now you've got dual items. You've got the battle mode is back, a real battle mode. Um, you've got different variations on the battle mode. You can see in the Let's Play we did on the channel with the boys. It was a lot of fun. And it's like, so they took what, what ended up being my favorite, and I talked about it on our tops, on our episode 75 when we did our 75 favorite games of all time. Mario Kart 8 was on that. I hadn't played Deluxe yet, I don't think. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, to me, it's my favorite Mario Kart game of all time. It's not like Gran Turismo. It's not like Forza or anything like this. It's right. just it's very arcadey, fun cars. But then they've even got things like the boys can beat me because they can just turn on the assist mode or whatever, yeah. where you can't go off the track. And it's like I don't care. I don't take it personally. It makes they it so you me. can actually play it yes, with them. It's, Otherwise, it's so yeah. accessible where it's not like. I mean, now if you want to jump up to 200 cc's and go online and stuff, you're going to get roasted because some of these people, I don't know how they. I still haven't gotten the drift down. I still can't do it perfectly. Like once I, I can do it pretty well, but I would even get my butt kicked yeah. online. Like it's just so much fun. It's one of those things where it's not like it doesn't take itself seriously. It's so good. And some people say, well, it's not even Mario Kart anymore. It's like it's Nintendo Kart now. So it's got the Inkling Boy and Inkling Girl, and it's got Animal Crossing little pip squeaks and stuff, and it's got Link and it's got Zelda. But it's like it's still. Mario Kart doesn't mean it just has to be Mario Kart, you know? Right. It it it, it don't don't be stupid like that. Yeah. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe just so much fun. Yep. Absolute blast. Number 9. We shared this one. Ultra Street Fighter 2. Same place. Very very interesting. Not to beat a dead horse, but uh, Ultra Street Fighter 2 Street Fighter 2 Turbo probably is my favorite ga- not probably is my favorite game fighting game of all time more than Super more than Street Fighter 3 more than 4 more than 5 which was a cluster uh, more than Mortal Kombat's any of those more than Turtles Tournament Fighters uh, it's just like Street Fighter 2 to me is still perfect I think they got it perfect with perfect Turbo but you still had stuff, and then Super added in the four extra challengers, and then Super Turbo went the first time you had the super moves or finishing moves or whatever you want to call them. Um, they added all that in. And that so and what I'm trying to say is Ultra Street Fighter 2, to me, is now the perfect version of Street Fighter 2. Yep. And one of the things I really liked that I didn't realize bothered me about other fighting games until I started playing Ultra Street Fighter 2 is... You don't get every other fighting game. You level up your EX gauge if it's X Men or if if it's Marvel vs. Capcom, whatever. You're leveling up for these super moves like in five seconds or something. In Street Fighter Two, in Super Street Fighter Two Turbo, and now in Ultra Street Fighter Two, to get up to being able to do your Shinku Hadouken and stuff like that, it takes a lot and it resets right, like it's more after or less every like round. A finishing move. Yeah, like, like you if have you to, hit it, it's going to kill him, basically. And you have to work to get it. So it's like when you feel that satisfaction that, holy crap, I actually built my meter up all the way, and then you go down forward, down forward, punch, and it just it, it it's so much more satisfying to get these super moves like that instead of right. just boom. Like, in, like when they switched to the Alpha series in Street Fighter, that was the one... And it differed by character, but you could have some that could build up like EX one, two, three. Like they'd have the meter yeah. and it would fill up. You could do this, but then you could do it with two punches, then you could do it with three punches. But still, like you're building up these super moves so quickly, and I just don't think that it, it throws the game out of whack. And I just think Ultra Street Fighter Two did it perfectly. Yeah. Again, like Sean was saying, I love the new art style. The funny thing is, I have the best fighting game name of all time: Super Street Fighter Two Turbo HD Remix on PlayStation Three, which is the same art style. And basically, the it's almost the same game, but I I I love the art style. There are some purists that don't like it. I love the art style. One of the cool things you can do on Ultra Street Fighter Two is you can do you can change not just the art style but the sound style also. So we found our perfect balance. I think we both agreed on this was the new art style with the old sounds. When you do the yeah. new sounds, it is not good at all. Nah, it's I like, like it. I I don't I don't like it at all. It doesn't fit. Uh, and if they would have, if they would have put the arcade visuals for the old school graphics in this, that I still do prefer been. that. I prefer that, but compared to the 16 bit version that they use for Ultra Street Fighter Two, I definitely prefer 
the the Udon comics uh, graphic style. Right. And yeah, Ultra Street Fighter 2. And like I said, I'm going to buy Street Fighter again. It's up for pre-order on Amazon. I already pre-ordered it, the collection. Because the collection is Street Fighter 1, Street Fighter 2, Street Fighter 2 Champion, Street Fighter 2 Turbo, Super Street Fighter 2, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, Alpha, Alpha 2, Alpha 3, Street Fighter 3, Street Fighter 2 Double Impact, and or whatever it is, and then Street Fighter 3 Third Strike. Like, everything that came out before Street Fighter 4, even the first Street Fighter that sucks, it's on there. I'm like, I have to. Like, the last time they did the anniversary collection on, on PS2... It was different. It's like you could pick any character from any game. And so I could put like Super Street Fighter 2 Ryu and go up against Street Fighter 2 Ken, which is completely unbalanced. It's not a good way to do it. But they haven't done this where you get every game. They've never done this before. Like I said, Capcom's been doing great with... But it's all separate game. Like you yes. have to go and say, I want to play Street Fighter 2. Like you, you can't do from what you just said. Right. Okay. As far as I understand, yes. But is it old school is it the arcade graphics or do they only have the new they haven't shown any i don't think they've shown any screenshots yet okay but i assume it'll be the like when they did like the capcom classic capcom classics collection those were the arcade ports so i think it will be the arcade graphics okay so please be excited number nine is ultra street fighter 2 plus what you failed to mention way of the hado the way of the hado mode (laughs) That, that we was actually, fun for a let's play and that's about it go watch the let's play of us <laughs> looking like a couple of just complete idiots who didn't decide to look up the uh instructions for this mode or anything ahead of time and like oh god i forgot that we did that on the let's play you just that was yeah, yeah. go back and watch that time. just google two-player co-op ultra street fighter 2 and watch the three-hour stream also it helps our uh, average view time thank you number eight this finished uh, Lower than I expected, and I wanted it to be higher on this made-up list that I have. So I don't know why I care, but it's way lower than I thought it would be. Uncharted The Lost Legacy. Wow. Number eight. Uncharted 2 was my game of the year. Uncharted 3 was my game of the year. Uncharted 4 was my game of the year. Uncharted The Lost Legacy is not. And I was so excited when they first revealed this at PSX a couple years ago. Uh, or I guess it was just a year ago now. Yeah, it was just last year. I remember the opening scene they're showing, and you can tell there's this this woman that's got her face covered. All these people were like, it's the new Tomb Raider, it's the new Tomb Raider. I'm like, hello, that's Chloe. This is Uncharted, that's Chloe. And then when I was vindicated, I was like, yeah, you stupid like professional video game people. I knew that was Chloe. And the best part about this game was Chloe. And Claudia Black, who's a voice actor, is just awesome chloe was one of my favorite characters from two and three she's not in four that was a big disappointment for me because i love her as a character so we all assumed that we said uncharted 4 is going to get dlc it's going to get dlc we all assumed you're going to play as sam or you're going to play as sully or maybe even elena or something weird and you're going to be just sitting at home while drake's out on <laughs> adventures or something uh but then when it turned out it was it was Chloe, I was like, well, this is awesome. I did not expect this at all. So it's Chloe and Nadine teaming up to go on a buddy cop adventure to go out and get the Tusk of Ganesh. And it sounds great. And it's still beautiful. Like, until Horizon came out this year, Uncharted 4 was the prettiest game I've ever seen. And Uncharted Lost Legacy is just as pretty. Just the, these environments are just jaw-droppingly beautiful. There's never any pop-in or anything like that. And I'm playing on a regular PS4. I don't have a pro. Just beautiful. And the interactions are so good. Like I said, Claudia Black as as Chloe Frazier, so good. Laura Bailey as Nadine. For as much of just a blah character as Nadine is, she does a great job. These two have great interplay. Like the, the little banter that goes back and forth between them is so well done. And you get to learn about Chloe and where she came from and her family history. And all this is so cool and it's so well done. And it's like, but then there's still a game you have to play. And the game you have to play is still Uncharted 4, period, with nothing nothing new at all. And it's got to the point now where I realize that, okay, it is time for Naughty Dog, to, Naughty Dog to stop making Uncharted's. It's time, whether they were going to just end Nate's story or not, it was time to move on from this series. So this game, it took me six hours to beat, and it's an Uncharted game. You know what an Uncharted game is. It's going to be great story, 
great acting, puzzle solving, lots of climbing. And when they got to Uncharted 4, you knew they were going to shoehorn in the rope mechanic everywhere. Everywhere there's a cliff where you just got to throw a rope and you got to swing, you got to do it. Not only that, but they brought back the most frustrating part of Uncharted 4 for me where you have to rope and you fall and then you slide and then the camera's weird and then you jump and you don't know where you're jumping to and you don't let you don't jump the right way. There's no rope thing and you just keep... And then speaking of Kojima and how game over stuff, <laughs> you, you spawn right back. You're on the hill and you're sliding and you're like, the camera's still bad. I still don't know where to jump and I'm still dying. <laughs> break something. And then the Jeep and you use the Jeep to solve the puzzles and everything. And my point is like... I did really like this game, but compared to everything that came before it, it's it's unfair to it to say that it doesn't live up because it doesn't live up because it is an Uncharted game. Does that make any sense? Like, you still climb. You still look for the... Right. Like, everything is the same. It's just with different characters this time. And yeah. it's... I don't know what... Uh, Uncharted will come back at some point, either with, with new characters or... Or they'll reboot it and start over with Drake, or they'll do something where it'll come back. But it's got to be, it's got to evolve. Where you look at like, I love the God of War series, and I cannot wait for Dad of War to come out next year. It's kind of the same. They made six games if you count the PSP games, and then they're finally like, okay, we've been doing the exact same thing for six games. We need to change this. They've done that. I want Naughty Dog to do that with Uncharted. I don't want them to give it to somebody else at Sony. I want Naughty Dog to do it, but I want Naughty Dog to be like, we are the best, you know, when it comes to making games. Let's take a step back. Let's see what Uncharted should be, what it can evolve to be, and go from there. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I never played it, but I would have thought this would have been top five for you i thought it was going to be it, it started in the top five and i was like well it's down it's down oh no it no it's down oh god it's still going oh man it's still going down but yeah. again it's still an uncharted game but it's just more of the same right even if the same is good it's still just more of the same understandable number seven speaking of storytelling in video games what remains of Edith Finch? Number seven on my list. This is a game, and I kind of touched on it last week. So, like, when we played Firewatch, I loved Firewatch when I played it. Firewatch is one of those games, the more I thought about it as time went on and the further away we got from it, I, I kept liking that game more and more without even playing it. That's what Edith Finch has also done to me. Like the further I get away from this, I'm like, my God, I've never, a game has never done storytelling in this way. And kind of like Sean did, we're not going to spoil anything, but like, like he said, it's you play through the whole point of the game is Edith Finch is going through her family history and there's been all these horrible deaths and all this other stuff. And that's not spoilers. That's just what the game is. And you play through those via each character, each family member's perspective and it is the it's such a cool way from like the first I think it was the first one when you uh, go into that dream world I guess when you're going along the trees and yeah. stuff like that I was like this is so cool like but I can picture a kid having this going on in yeah. their mind but then, oh yeah they did it perfect yeah but then there are some there are some rough moments in this there's like the you, tub the tub I couldn't I could almost not play it it was so. Oh my god! Um, but then and then they 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 like the hatchery. That one was scene. just fun. Yeah, where but 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 think of how messed up well, this person is yeah, in their head, and they're they think they're they're gonna be like king or something, wasn't it? Something like that. Yeah, there's yeah, I think they so. were gonna. It was just like, and then you know how. So it's a very very emotional game, and I feel like I might have already given away too much, but storytelling. I've said many times, what brought me back to video games in 1998, I mean, I played it in 99, I think, was Metal Gear Solid. And it wasn't because it was the best playing game ever. The controls aren't that great. But that was when games evolved as a storytelling medium. And I always, always, which made this year so difficult, I value storytelling in games, as long as the rest of the game is there. Like I'm saying, with Uncharted, it really wasn't, you know? Um I value storytelling in games so much and the story there's storytelling and story. The storytelling in this is unlike anything I've 
ever seen. Like you said, walking simulators kind of get a bad rap and everything, but this was just something I had never seen before, and it really stuck with me, and it got more and more powerful as time has gone on. Yeah, that's another one. I'm torn between just going back and playing it or kind of like I did with Firewatch, have Brittany play it and just be like, let me know whenever you're going to play this I want to watch. Yeah. Don't play it without me, you know. So I get to experience it, but maybe have her play through it. But I do need to go back and go through that again for sure. Yep. It's great. It's great. I kind of wanted it to be higher on my list also, but this is just, even for the game, only the games that we played this year is freaking stacked. Yeah. So Edith Finch is my number seven. Number six. We short, We shared this one as well. Sonic Mania. So there's going to be a lot of repetition on this list, at least with games, not necessarily with order. Sonic Mania, I, I remember in July 2016, we had decided to make the, make the leap to YouTube. Yep. Our very first episode was... And one of our best, well, one of our most viewed. Biggest, yeah, when we're not talking about Bob Maggie. Or um, WWE. Yeah. I still, it's over 36,000. I don't get it. <laughs> uh, Sonic Mania was announced the weekend of Comic-Con in July 2016. And I remember it was a slow news week because it was Comic-Con. So there was like, you know, we were thinking about Justice League trailer and we got the teaser for that and blah, 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 blah. We're like, what are we going to talk about for video games? And then Sonic Mania happened. And it was like, I think we only got a trailer that was maybe a minute and a half or two minutes long. But just seeing that, I was like, this is Sonic. Sonic hasn't been Sonic since... 1994 yeah and sonic was back and like sean said this is such a big part of our childhood where we chose a genesis over a super nintendo mostly because of price because it was 99 instead of 200 but also like we fell for the marketing and i don't want to say fell, fell for sounds bad but like we bought into the marketing yeah. of like sega is cool and Sonic is cool, and he's fast, and he's just he's different than this fat plumber that just jumps around on poor little Goombas. And then Sonic 2 took it to the next level, and like we said earlier, Sonic 3, I think, took it really to the next level. And then ever since then, even like Sonic Spinball was okay, but we got Sonic 3D Blast was just weird, and then they just abandoned the 2D to go to Sonic Adventure and Sonic Adventure 2 and Sonic 06, probably the worst game ever made, and then... <laughs> That was so bad. So then they did Sonic the Hedgehog 4, and I had my hopes up for it, and I bought episode one. I was like, this is, he's not like, his jump is weird now. He's no longer a circle when he jumps. He's like an egg. So it's like the, it, it's one of those things where I can't even describe it unless you see him jump. You'd be like, oh, yeah, that's not right. That would be hard to play. Um, they only did two episodes. I think they had more planned, but it just didn't sell well, and it didn't review well at all. And I was like, Sonic's just dead. Um, I don't like any of the 3D games where you're just running on rails. It's just not – that's not what Sonic is to me, my friend. Um, <laughs> you see what I did? To? Well, you know, that's what Christmas means to me, my friend. <laughs> oh. uh, I don't know why I went there. But then Sonic Mania, I saw it. I was in love. It got delayed a couple times because everything gets delayed. But the biggest thing about this when it got announced was that they they said they were working with Christian Whitehead and a couple other people that had made these Sonic fan games and had worked on Sonic ports for, for iOS. And they love Sonic. They know what Sonic should be. And that Sega felt comfortable enough to say, yes. That's awesome. Go make Sonic yeah. Mania. Like... So you knew when I knew that I was like, this is gonna be as good as it gets. It'll probably never get better than this. I do think Sonic Mania is the best Sonic the Hedgehog game ever made. Yeah, it's better than two. Yep. It's better than three because, like Sean was saying, it took the best parts of some of the earlier games, and it could have screwed that up. But no, it took like Chemical Zone. It took could, it, well Casino wasn't it, but you had Green Hill. Just I remember firing up for the first time and hearing that Green Hill soundtrack. Like, oh my god, this is it. And then it's like. This seems like Green Hill, but oh no, that I used to go that way. Now I can't. And the the level design in these games, I can't imagine. It's not like Mario where it's just you go from A to B. And maybe there's a pipe you go down, but then you go down, you come back up, you always end up on the same plane, basically. Sonic is like, if you ever look at a picture of how these levels are designed, they're like, you start here. And then it's just like this gigantic, huge rectangle with like the, the goals over here. 
but there's three or four different paths you can go. Right. And do you want to go f- like not every level is just about going fast. Sometimes you get you get uh, where you got to do just just real big platforming stuff. You get those levels like where you go into the background, which was so that much was like cool. this is yeah. so cool. I didn't think they would do this, and I. Uh, the only downfall to this was I hate that last world. It's horrible. It's confusing. Oh yeah. You had the stupid things you had to roll around and I could never get that right when you would jump right and I just like I got and also oh my god the the boss of uh Oil Ocean Oil Ocean it was called. Yeah. It was very frustrating, but it, and it wasn't even like it wasn't a good frustrating. It was just like this is just cheap and not well designed. I don't <laughs> this is not good. It's not that I'm just bad at games. So those were the two things that if if the last world would have been better it probably would have finished a couple of numbers higher on my list. Um, but Sonic Mania, my number six game of the year for 2017. Is there anything you didn't talk about or I didn't talk about with it? With Sonic? Yeah. I don't th- I mean, no, I don't think so. Yeah. I think we covered it. All right. Number five. Another game that kept dropping the more and more I thought about my list. Super Mario Odyssey, wow, okay. number five. You had it lower than I did. I did. And the fact that some people are trying to say this is the game of the year, I just don't I don't get it. So this was really, I've talked about it before, but I've never been a 3D Mario guy. I played, I dabbled in 64. That's really it. I never played Sunshine because that's stupid. <laughs> Galaxy I tried, but I didn't like having to, to do the nunchuck and the waggle. I was like, this isn't... Galaxy, if I could just use a controller, it might have been better, but I didn't like the motion stuff. So I've just never been a Sonic... Or no, I've never been a 3D Mario type of guy. This game, I think it's the best 3D Mario ever made. Again, it's really the only one I've played a lot of. But that being said, I had a lot of issues with this. The game, first of all, it kind of echoes your points. This game didn't stick with me. Like, I beat the game... I did some of the post uh, post game content in the 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 world that you get to right after it was just so cool from a nostalgic perspective and stuff and some of the puzzles in there were really cool um, and I went to the moon and whatever it's not a spoiler it's just you go to the moon yeah. and I was like I don't I, I just put it down and I haven't gone back I put in right at fifteen hours I think on this and like Sean was saying I haven't gone back to it in weeks now my boys are still playing through it and they like it but it's it just didn't hook me. Like I wanted to beat the game and like New Donk City, if you don't know what happens there, don't let it get spoiled for you. Just get there, get to the end of New Donk City and just you will have your mind blown. Yep. Um I like the Bowser fights. I didn't like the the rabbit bad guys, the brouhaha's. What were they? Brutals. The brutals. I didn't like <laughs> the <them>. brouhaha's. <laughs> I wish it would have just been the Koopa kids. Yeah. Uh and that's probably nostalgia talking, but I didn't like them. Some of those boss fights were super easy. The game wasn't very difficult until you get to the post game stuff. It's not a difficult game right. at all. I don't know. The The main thing I had though is them forcing these damn motion controls into this game pissed yeah. me off. When you've got so many buttons, whether you're playing on the switch or you're playing with a pro controller, you have the same amount of buttons and half of them, if not maybe more than half, are not used. Yep. Like Y and B do the same thing as X and A. L1 and L2 and R1 and R2, like nothing. There's all these unused buttons. So if you're playing with a pro controller, because they're like, oh, no, the recommended way is to, to hold the two Joy-Cons. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not going to play like this. I'm not going to do it. So if you want to like... If you want to throw your hat and have it circle around, you got to gotta, you gotta throw it and you just, I'm just doing this. I'm afraid my pro controller is going to go flying out of my hand. Right. I could never get the, the Kung Lao thing where your hat goes down and spins I know and you goes forward. I've yeah, never done that. Because you can't do it on the pro controller. It's like impossible. <laughs> to get it to just go up, it wouldn't do it. It would want to do the spin throw when I didn't want to do the spin throw. I don't, I don't, I don't like that. If they would go back and patch that out and be like, okay, well, you can use X to to do a spin attack or something, that would make the game maybe it would make it too easy. I don't know, but the controls were a major issue in this for me. And just the, I just, I prefer Mario to be side scrolling, period. Mario is at its best when it's yeah a platformer, but but to give it a major plus, my favorite part of the game was every two D section in this. 
so yeah. cool. That was I a, almost I almost wish they wouldn't have shown that in any of the trailers or gameplay footage or anything. I wish it would have just been like I go down a pipe and I'm like, right, you gotta be kidding me! Like that would have just oh. Speaking of mind blowing, that would have been mind blowing. So I feel like I'm really ragging on the game. I did really enjoy my time with it, but I. I I, I if this wins game of the year from anybody, I'll be like, man, you didn't play some of these other games. Yeah, you just you just didn't. I just don't think it's that good. So I remember you were very apprehensive because of the hat. Do you feel like that had nothing? I mean, obviously that was yeah. the cause of some of the control things, but in the end, you're fine with the hat. I was fine with and the it's hat. More just the control. It's just and- more that I think the 3D style of Mario games, how how they are almost puzzle platformers for a lot of the game. Now, I don't yeah. know if the other ones are like that, but this was so much like you got to you gotta capture a Goomba and you got to stack them up 10 high so you can go over there to miss Goomba so you can go, oh, I'm so in love, and then she'll give you a star. <laughs> or you got to figure out which, and like, there's so many puzzle elements to this which aren't really Mario to me, but I did like. So the, at the end of the day, I had more an issue with how you control the cap than the actual... Right. Capture mechanic. Okay, yeah. Is what I would say. So Mario Odyssey, number five. Put your pitchforks away. I'm sorry. It's, it's very good. I think originally I had said a nine. I think it's dropped from that. It's about 8.5 yeah. for me. It's about 8.5. It's yeah, fine. I, that's fair. It's fine. Number four. Metroid Samus Returns. I loved... This game. This is a game that I definitely, well, clearly was more fond of than Sean was. This is a game that, like, I was, after I bought this every day on my lunch, I mean, I don't usually get lunch breaks, but I was like, I brought my 3DS to work, and I go, I'm going to go out to my car for an hour, I'm going to play this damn game, and I'm going to see if I can get more Metroids, and it, it just, the game, I didn't want the game to end. I beat it in 12 hours or whatever. I will say a big factor, I yeah. think, is that you have the XL. I think oh, that gosh, would have yes. made my experience better. But yeah. the little I did play on the XL was like, oh, oh, this is wow. Yeah. Yeah. It made a huge difference. But. Yeah. Um, so kind of to echo what Sean was saying, like this when this was announced, I still don't know why they didn't put this on their E three yeah. Treehouse Live. They did it on the like, oh yeah, we got a new two D Metroid game coming. Like this should have been a big they should have followed up the Metroid Prime Four logo with Metroid Samus Returns, and everybody right. would have lost their minds. I really hope this game sold well so that we do get more 2D Metroid games. Yeah, um, I agree with what Sean said, that this didn't feel as Metroidvania-ish, which feels stupid to say about a Metroid game, but as Metroidvania-ish as Super Metroid did. But I like... I like the way this game was structured. I like how it ramps up from like you, you, the first Metroids you get, they're just going and all you got to do is shoot them a couple times and you just, you suck in their DNA and you go, I like how you have to find them to unlock the, the big Chozo, Chorizo, whatever (laughs) thing. And then the water drains and you go down there. Um, I like that they did have all the classic power ups, even if it took a while to get to them. Yeah. Um, and especially one of the things I was worried about when I, it's so weird to see trailers of 3DS games because I don't think they're ever as clear as they would be if it was just like play it on your Switch without having to have the stereoscopic 3D built in and all this other stuff. So I was kind of worried that like the art style was going to turn me off. I wish they, I, when I saw it revealed, I was like, man, I wish it just looked like Super Metroid. I wish it looked like the the Metroid 2 fan remake that got shut down by Nintendo, yeah. AM2R. Um, but once you play it, like it works so well. And the fact that I don't really ever play with 3D on, but if you did play with 3D on on this, you would know there's always stuff going on in the background. Like you'd see a giant alien or a giant robot mining in the back. And you're like, well, this is like depth that you could never get. And I don't mean that literally. Well, I mean it both ways of just standard 16 bit graphics, you know, there's, it made you feel like you were in a world. Um, the boss fight, the only, one of the downsides was there wasn't as many boss fights, but they got around that because you had to fight 40 mini bosses in Metroids. Uh, and when you got to the last few Metroids you had to get, those things were insane. Yep. Um, 
so it didn't have i mean there's if you're a metroid fan there's some enemies in it that you'll know and love um and then the very end ties into another metroid game which i didn't i didn't know was coming i still haven't played it i need to go back and do it but the i i just absolutely loved my time with this game and i didn't want it to end also like sean was saying the gameplay stuff at first i could not get the hang of the the parry or whatever it was called i just couldn't get the timing right but once you did it's like some people complained about it because they thought it kind of broke up the pace but i'm like y'all are acting like metroid is a contra game or something it's not like that so it's okay that you see an enemy they give you the little flash they show you they're coming you go pop one hit kill done uh I also like the way they they used how you can um, use the L and the R to, to to change the way you aim. You can sit still if you hold down L, and you can aim in any direction. Yeah. I like the little touches graphical wise. Like like if you hold L and you aim behind you, Samus won't just turn and do this. She will like she'll be facing this way, and then she'll go oh bam bam bam, and she just looks like such a badass. It's just it was so well done. Yeah. Absolutely love my time with the game. I hope we get more 2D Metroids. I don't care about Metroid Prime. Maybe that's because I've never played them. But like you'll if you would love one. Okay. It is Metroid. Two and three, it, it's a little different. I mean it One is like Ocarina of Time, whereas okay. I think two and three are more Majora's Mask. Ew, I don't want to play two and three. Like, one is in the normal Metroid universe. Like, Ocarina is in Hyrule. Okay. Majora is in Termina. Right? right. Like, you would like one. Okay. I hope that's how four is. At least I hope they don't get too crazy with, like... I just hope it's a standard Metroid game. Yeah. But I think you would like... You would definitely like one. Yeah. I think. I mean, maybe it hasn't aged well. I don't know, but... Yeah. I should give it a try, especially since 4 is coming out, and I'll probably end up buying it just because I have a Switch. I feel like I should. Yeah. So, number four, Metroid Samus Returns. Number three, Resident Evil 7. I think I like this better than 4. And I I played 4 for the first time last year, 2016, when it got re-released, and I loved it. I, I said at the time, I was like, I don't know how I missed out on this for all this time. But with it being an HD re-release for like the third time or however many times they've re-released that game, I wish they would have updated the feel of it, the way it feels when you aim with the right stick, that it's not so slow and cumbersome and stuff. But then it wouldn't be the same game, so whatever. Resident Evil 7 is just unlike any game I've ever played before. It's it's not even just that, fir- the, like Sean said, that first hour is unreal. And the whole time you're in the house is just like you go up to a door and it's like I don't I'm afraid I have no to idea open what's going to be on the other side. Yeah. And you don't even have the loading times like you did with the old Resident Evil games that built suspense in. This is just like there's going to be an oil monster on the other side or Jack's going to come through with a shovel and cut half my head off. Or when you and just like, hear him all of a sudden you hear him like taunting you and you're like like what, what where, where is he? Oh god and then yeah. Oh. Or you're just walking down a hall and you think everything's fine and then boom, boom, he comes through the wall. It's got boss fights that are really well done, even though one yeah. is the most disgusting thing I've ever seen, I think, in a video game. It just made me want to vomit. <laughs> uh, they had like a, a saw part to it. That um, was cool. Yeah. that you And it's so the, the puzzle solving in this was really well done and the, the shotgun and all that and the, the shadow puzzles and stuff like that and other things I here but can't think of and, um and even so like marty sleva has said a lot of times that if he his game of the year is the first two-thirds of this game yeah like if the if the whole game would have been like that he said it probably would have been his game of the year uh and while i i agree with that i don't i don't hate the third act as much as I think a lot of people do because I still felt very uneasy. Like it was, it right. was different than being in the house, but it was still like there's doors you have to open and there's lots of enemies. And yeah, it's more action oriented and the story kind of gets crazy and everything, but it's still until you get down in the tunnels. Actually, when you're on the boat, that's cool. When you get down in the tunnels, yeah. it's like, this is, this is just not even fair anymore. Um, it just, it brought back the, Like, Resident Evil 1 
was cool <laughs> because it was the whole <laughs> haunted house kind of vibe. Yeah. You're in a this mansion, creepy mansion. And then two were like, well, we can't do that again. Mm, you're in a let's city. Let's have it be in a police station. Oh, yeah, that's right. And then three, yeah, you were like in the city and I think maybe even in the police station for a little bit of it. You're in a hospital. Four, you were in like... Four, you were all over the place. Or not four. four not four, so not four, but uh, Code Veronica. And well, then four, four kinda, totally flipped yeah. it around. Yeah. But then this is like you're back to just like... Cre- it's just uh, there was such like an a realness to area, it. but it's also like it's just a house. But then there's so many. That house is bigger than you think it is. Right. And then I remember the first time I walked outside the door was like I'm scared to death to actually go out. Like I don't know who's going to be out here. Uh, Resident Evil Seven was just a fantastic game, and it's definitely one I do want to go back and play through. Yeah. Again, um, and then there's some big fan service at the end. If somehow you haven't been spoiled yet, I'm not going to spoil it for you, but you'll go holy crap. Uh, when a certain thing is revealed, um, yeah, Resident Evil Seven is just awesome. I it 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 wasn't gonna win my game of the year, but I feel like I, I feel like this is gonna get a it's gonna have a disservice done to it because it came out so early. Like it was like the third week of January. That some people are like, right. "Holy crap, that came out this year!" That I think it's gonna get bumped down in in some categories and stuff because people just forget what an amazing experience it was. I don't want to play it in VR. I'm kind of like Adam. We were saying Adam's like, I'm not a fan of pooping my pants. I would probably <laughs> poop my pants in this game. Like go back and watch. I, I did the let's play of the first hour of this game. And I was just, just out here by myself in the pool house recording studios, scared to death. Oh God. It's amazing. Just play. That's another game. thing. It's right up there with Zelda and that that is something I wish I could be neuralized and experience again for the yeah. first time. See, I mean, I, it's still going to scare yeah. the crap out of me knowing more or less what's going to happen, but I would love to be able to experience that for the first time again. I think there's going to be, you'll remember the big moments like climbing up the ladder to the window in the opening. And then the, then the, what happens after that? Like I'll remember all that, but the little moments where you're exploring and I will, I'll forget a lot of that. Uh, I'll forget a lot of it and it'll be fun to go back through it again. Yeah. All right, so now this is when things get interesting for me. So, number two, this is the hardest decision I think I've ever had to make for a Game of the Year award in my head. <laughs> that we're not like, just you know what I mean. So, Horizon comes out on the 28th of February. The Switch and Zelda comes out on March 3rd. And we both were of the same mindset. I'm not going to get Horizon Zero Dawn because we're getting the Switch in three days. I know Zelda. I cannot wait to play this, especially since I had had my 3D Zelda fears quenched by playing through Ocarina finally. <laughs> Did I didn't mean to say quenched. I think you mean squashed. Squashed. Sure. <laughs> but, but playing through Ocarina of Time finally on the 3DS, the definitive version of it, playing through Twilight Princess, I was like, okay, 3D works for Zelda. And... I knew it was going to be great. I knew I was spending all this money on a Switch and a Pro Control and all this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play Zelda until I'm sick of this game. And I did. For about a month, it was the only game I played. Finally, was like, I'm ready to move on. I played some little things here and there. And I think it was in May that I finally went back and got Horizon Zero Dawn. Wow. With the stupid zigzag? Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Do the super kick, Dolph. Um... And I thought playing through Zelda, I was like, I've heard Horizon's good. Colin and Greg talk about it a lot. I trust them. But there's no way it's going to live up to Zelda. Zelda is the craziest game I've ever played. It's not my favorite game of all time, but it is way up there. Then I played Horizon. And Horizon Zero Dawn hooked me more than I thought it would. It blew my mind. I had never really been a big fan of bow and arrow, bows and arrows in video games, but it worked so well in this, even though it didn't actually work as well as Zelda because that motion aiming on the switch pro controller is just, it's just so pinpoint accurate. It's awesome. Horizon zero dawn. Like we said, I love storytelling in video games more than anything. 
Horizon Zero and stories in video games. Horizon Zero Dawn story, there is so much there. There's so much lore that you get little bits of and you, you, you figure out why the world is like this and you figure out where Aloy came from and, and how the world got to, to be where it is and these machines and there's new machines and all this other stuff. Tell me AJ didn't lose. No, he won. Okay. Um, Calf Crusher submission. Good. Good. Then, yeah, there's, you, you tapped out like a little bee. <laughs> You're done. You're never getting another shot. And Owen's insane one. Of course, they're not going anywhere. Yeah. Did did D Bride turn heel? Yes and no. Okay. I mean that. Shane, you're out of control, kind of a thing. I think Zane rolled up Orton or something, and Shane counted one, two, and then stopped, and then Brian got in his face like, "Don't do that. You can't do that. Whatever." And then Zane pinned Orton, and then I guess Brian did a fast count. Oh, well, yeah, yeah well, that's tough. Um, anyways, Horizon just. Blew my again the prettiest game I've ever seen. The story was so in, like like I told Sean I was like you're gonna get to the point where you're gonna go up this this big building you're gonna get to the top and you're gonna finally start to figure out what happened and what Horizon Zero Dawn means and you're just gonna be hooked. And I was hooked. I've been fighting with myself for probably the last four months of what my game of the year is, and I think this is this is how <laughs> messed up in the head I am that I'm like I'm taking this so seriously that I'm like. Everything in me, after I beat Zelda and I was done, I moved on, everything since then has been Horizon Zero Dawn. It's one of those games that really stuck with me. I couldn't stop thinking about the story, where the sequel's going to go, what the Frozen Wilds might do. Um, all this world, these relationships with like Aaron and all these other people that you meet in the world and, and their their backstories. And Aloy is such a great character, even if the the face animations are like, I, I, they're just weird when they're talking. It's like Mass Effect. It's and not it, like Mass Effect. Well, it's not like <laughs> Mass Effect, but it's, it's yeah. And then, like, I was trying to just, I went back and listened to our old podcast when I talked about Zelda, when I talked about Horizon, because everything in me was like, I think it's Horizon. Horizon's my game of the year. And I feel like I'm, like, controversial in my own head for saying that Horizon's my game of the year. Then I was like, okay, so I got to go back and I got to play Zelda. And I played Zelda even before the DLC came out. And it started to click again, although I kept dying because I just didn't remember how to control the game. And Yeah. And then all of a sudden it just clicked that, like, I had forgotten. Like, I was just saying about Resident Evil. I had forgotten because it had been so long how magical it was playing Breath of the Wild, not just being on the Great Plateau for the first time and Link's naked. He's just got boxers on, and there's the old man who you can tell is going to be somebody, and you get the paraglider, and you glide off there for the first time, and you see your first guardian, and you're like, well, that's... I don't know how I'm ever going to beat these things. But that this open world... And a lot of people have, have, have said it's only a game of the year because it's got Zelda on the title, and it's, oh, it's just Skyrim and blah, blah, blah. You can't say that though I don't think like if you like Uncharted you like it you could say well what if they just made an Indiana Jones game and it was the same as Uncharted well but you can't because Uncharted you care about the game because it's got the name Uncharted on it because you care about Nathan Drake and you care about Sully and you want to know about Drake and Elena and all this other stuff so you, you can't just say something just gets it because it's got the name on it because the name is the game does that make sense yeah Long story short, my number two game of the year is Horizon. Okay. It's Horizon. I I love Horizon so much. Uh, any other year, I mean, I like it better than Metal Gear Solid Five. I like it better than Uncharted 4. But Zelda's just a little bit belder. <laughs> Belter. That's a new word. I just killed the moment. Zelda, Mr. Belding? I should cut that out, but I'll never remember. Zelda that. is... Zelda is... Zelda oh, that's why is Zelda Belder. is Belder. Um, <laughs> Zelda's just a little bit better. Like... <laughs> oh, you can tell we're two hours in. Um... So my, my favorite game series of all time, I think is probably, it's still Metal Gear. 
But like Zelda's right underneath it. And while this isn't my favorite game of all time, and I actually still don't think it's my favorite Zelda game of all time, I think I still prefer Link to the Past. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm off my Zelda one's the best game ever made. I'm, I'm off of that. I still think I prefer a link to the past for some of the reasons that you said, but the, the only, the real, the, it would have been nice to have the dungeons and all that other stuff, but the real thing is just the breakable weapons. Just, it just, it just grates at me. Um, if they would have gotten rid of that, then it, this might've been my favorite Zelda game of all time. Still behind Metal Gear Solid three, but man, um, and I'm just kind of combining two and one into one, but just, just put one's Zelda's my number one game. Um, Horizon's great. It's beautiful. The f- story's fantastic, but Zelda, it just is special and Horizon's special too, but Zelda is just Belder. <laughs> <laughs> Zelda is just like any, it's unlike any game I've ever played where it's, it's just, I know it's something as simple as climbing, but like climbing, like but it's just everything, like getting around in that game is just perfect. Yes. Between like the warping, <laughs> <laughs> you can't. You're crying because the builder. <laughs> it's like it's Zelda so is builder. But anyway, <laughs> it's the warping, the climbing, and then the paraglider. Or what is it's, that? What it's called? Yes. Or it's just called the glider. The glider is just. It's just. It's just like when I want to go somewhere, like if I want to get over here, I could either like warp here oh yeah or i can warp here yeah i'm gonna warp here and, and I'm then just, just gonna, fly especially as once opposed you to warping here and then walking up. right yeah. yeah just everything works in conjunction just perfectly and and like it's not the the most technically sound there's pop in and stuff because when you build a game this gigantic on the power of the switch you're gonna have limitations and some of the textures are really flat and there's well, pop in and stuff but like what's weird is when i was exploring just earlier today i was in this area this pretty sizable area that i had not been to before and i was up kind of high i wasn't on top of a mountain but i was up high and I'm looking in the direction that I need to go. I'm like, all right, if I go that way, I haven't explored any of that. But then I look and I see a blue shrine. I'm like, what in the world? I'm like, I thought I hadn't been here. And then so I line up. So I'm like facing right at it. And then I look at the map and I'm like following. I'm like, all right, where is this thing? And it was really far away. Oh, like yeah. You can see for miles and miles in that game. Yeah. Like all of a sudden I'm like, how have I done the shrine? I haven't been here yet. And I was looking at a shrine that was yeah, way beyond this area that I'm trying to explore. It just, I don't know, it blew my mind. Yeah. And not only, not only is it like an open, like I, I think I've talked about this on podcast, but it's not an, like they made such a big deal about Metal Gear Solid Five being an open world. And it was an open world. There's just nothing just there. Nothing there. Just a bunch of sand and a couple little encampments here and there. Whereas Zelda, it's like every time, like Sean was saying, every time you get to a new area. Like I remember before I stopped playing and moved down to Horizon, I got to this this little village that I didn't even know existed on this it's like a beach village with like these huge these trees that had like these gigantic like leaves or something. And I was like, I didn't even know this was here yep. and then when i find it so i bought the dlc and then i'm looking at my hero's mode or hero's path whatever it's called i'm like i haven't seen anything in this game yeah my little green line there are so many areas that i that i have completely skipped over and all those areas have something in them and it is just amazing this this year has been insane for video games the fact that two of my top five favorite games of all time came out in one year is insane but at the end of the day zelda breath of the wild is my game of the year i mean obviously i can't argue i thought horizon was gonna be zero one <laughs> well, i mean that would oh, that would be correct but i thought it was gonna be number one but zelda was belter but zelda was belter <laughs> zelda was belter put that on a t-shirt and print it zelda was Belders. All right, so we have eight of the ten the same, and we actually agreed on five, five in the same location. Yep. So that's about what I figured. It's good. It's good. Whew, this has been a podcast. Do you want to do it? Yeah, whatever. It should be quick. Well, I don't know. No, yeah, I, whatever. It sounds like We're here. Let's do it. Whatever. All right, let's do it. So those are our top 10 games of the week, but that's not the end of the podcast. Why is that, Sean? Because it's time for the... <gasps> it's the back of the box!
Backbox Challenge. Challenge. If you didn't know the Backbox Challenge, how we end the podcast here every week on the Two Player Co-op Podcast. What this game is, is we take a look at a previously released retail game, and we look at the back of that retail box. We read the description aloud to the other player and bleep out any pertinent information that would give the game away or make it way too obvious. Then the other player gets to ask some follow-up questions that can only be answered with a yes or no and try to see if they can guess the back the the game of the damn it if they can guess what the game is with the back of the box that we've read aloud and that's what we're going to do now the points aren't real and the questions don't matter Sean. um i'm gonna go first just because eh, i should be fine on battery but my battery's <laughs> dying so i'm gonna go first anyway okay blank <laughs> <clears throat> Bullets fly and circuits fry in heavy duty blank combat. Uh, techno slaughter. I don't know what techno slaughter is, but. Is this System Shock? No. Okay. You control blank, the ultimate blank warrior patrolling the charred urban destruction of the Great War, and a murderous blank is gunning for you. You are the ultimate tech destroyer. What the hell? With <coughs> blanks, blanks, blank, and blank. Are those people? No, they're things that you have okay. to destroy tech, apparently. Um, Is this part of a series? I don't believe so. Oh, God. <laughs> um, blank of cyber combat. Rock through what cyber combat rock group <laughs> blank. This is like one of like the it's like a bullet point talking about the game blank of cyber combat. Simon Benz and Heaven Heaven talked. <laughs> I'm so confused on <laughs> what this is trying to say. Cyber combat rock through war torn urban streets, bombed out farmland, scorched forests, and bullet riddled burbs. Burbs. Okay, so this is okay. Is this an eight bit game? No. Sixteen. No. Oh my god, I'm screwed. Thirty two. Yes. Uh, is it a Saturn game? No. It's a PlayStation exclusive. No. Oh my god. <laughs> it's a PC. No. What the hell? There's nothing else. The thirty two X. Yes. Oh, do you pilot a giant robot? You do. I don't remember the name of it. I can't, it's not Mech Warrior because no. it, it's um. Oh my god! I really liked that game. We had we owned it. it right? We had okay. it. I really liked. I had it. to pull up gameplay footage, and even then, I'm oh like, my god. I think we own this, but but what was the name of it? I know the game. I can't think of the name now. It's not Mech Warrior. It's not Mech Assault. It's not no. Gear. It's not metal. It's not gear. Metal. Slug. No. no. <laughs> That's the Contra game. I don't know. Metal Assault. Metal Warrior. No. Mecha Warrior. Mecha Metal. <laughs> Bleeder. Mecha Metal. <laughs> Belder. Metal Belder. Um, metal I think this was also the name, I think, of a bad guy in Ninja Turtles. Metal Shredder, Metal King, Rat King, Metal Usagi Yojimbo. <laughs> he was a good guy. Triceraton, Bebop, Rocksteady. It's it's Metal Blank. I, I have no idea. I can't think of it now. Metal Assault, Metal uh, Rat King, Metal, metal Body Part, Metal Gear, <laughs> Metal Arm, Metal Leg, Metal Head, Metal Head, Metal Head. <laughs> that was the name of it. Oh, I would have never gotten it. Metalhead, yeah, that was the guy in Ninja Turtles. Yeah. Yeah, we had the action figure. Yeah, Metalhead was the name of the game? Holy crap, I would have never guessed that. That That's the game, though. I love that game. I, I don't know what made me think of it, but... I oh, no, either. I know what I did. I'm like, I want to do something obscure. I'm like, let me look through all, like, 20 games that were released on 32X <laughs> right. and find something obscure. And then I saw uh, that, I'm like, wait, we actually own this, I thought. I couldn't remember. I was pretty sure we did. We definitely did. It was one of, yeah, not many. All right. Ready? Yep. The blank 
gang has spread crime and violence throughout the streets of blank. Only one man has enough guts to take the streets back from them. Blank. Now the blank gang has kidnapped his daughter, Jessica, to bring oh. him under their control. But they've made one mistake. Blank's furious and he furious and he wants someone's head. Blank and Blank's boyfriend Blank are joining Blank to clean up the stuff. Wait, 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 wait. Filled. Blank and Blank's boyfriend Blank. Blank and not oh, both blank. Of their boyfriend. <laughs> blank, one person, and Blank's boyfriend Blank are joining Blank to clean up the slime filled streets and rescue Jessica. Along the way you'll find food to replenish your health. Is this a Streets of Rage game? No. Is it a final fight? No. Is it a beat em up? Yes. Okay. Or better yet, search for weapons to knock the living daylights out of your enemies. So join Blank and his friends as they try to free the city from the evil clutches of the mad... Oh, Blank! <laughs> mad... Mad Gear? Mm-hmm. I can't remember what game it is, though. Oh, is it Double... No. Is it Double Dragon? Mm-mm. Is it a 16-bit game? Mm-mm. Eight? Mm-hmm. Is it River City Ransom? Nope. Is it... Mini Final Fight or whatever that game was called? Yes. Is it? Mighty. Mighty Final Fight. It's like I when you said mini because they're all tiny. When you said is it Final Fight, I was like, <laughs> no, it's not. You didn't ask if it was part of the series. Look at these stupid graphics. That's why I called it Mini Final Fight. I right. forgot it's Mighty Final Fight. Oh, uh, you know what the God, lowest? That's terrible. Segue. You know what the lowest rated game on IGN this year was? Double Dragon 4. 3.5. Double Dragon 4. It's like the oh. graphics of Double Dragon 2 and stuff, but it was right. just horrible. And it was I forgot that game even came yeah. out. I was so excited for it. We were going to buy it and do Let's Plays, and it was like, this is one of the worst games ever made. So That's bad. Yeah, We did not do it. Well, that went better than I thought it would have. I don't know. How I how did I get to oh, 32? It wasn't any of those systems. It's got to be 32X. Is it the mech game? Yeah. Okay. Oh. Uh, well, yeah. What, what finally made you get to where it was... A mech assault kind of game. Because I knew, I was trying to think of, there's only 20 games on the 3DS, <laughs> I mean the 3DS, the 32X, and it was like, it's not, Doom was on there, this is not Doom. It seems kind of futuristic sounding, so I was like, what else could there be? Is it the mech game? Yeah. It, just, it just was like, I don't know what else there that it could be. Yeah. That has been it for episode 102. Woo, boy, that was a long one. Our top 10 games of 2017. Thank you guys so much for hanging in there with us for episode 102. As you know, we are part of the Nerd 901 family, so go ahead and check us out at nerd901.com for all things nerdy in Memphis and around the globe. I'm going to keep shouting him out because he's going to keep going up and above and up and above and beyond. Up and above. <laughs> check out Blurred Without Fear, youtube.com slash Blurred Without Fear. Check out our buddy Ernie. He's doing great work over there. Uh, go check him out. He's he's blowing up like we knew he would. You can find us on Twitter. I'm at Kevin White Twenty Four. He's at Real Sean White. Together, we're at Two Player Underscore Co op. Uh, obviously, hopefully, you're watching us on YouTube. Otherwise, you stole our video, and that's not very nice. Go to YouTube.com/slash Two Player Co op and hit that subscribe button. Share the video with your friends uh, and and all the <coughs> like. Like the video if you liked it, and like it if you don't like Bob Mackey. Uh, you can find us on audio also on iTunes, SoundCloud, Google Podcast, Stitcher, and audio services all around the world. And we have a Facebook page that we never update at facebook.com slash two-player co-op gaming. Thank you guys so much for being here. We're going to be off next week for Christmas. We're going to come back, I think, the week after that. We'll see. Um, hopefully have an idea of what we're doing differently next year. Again, if you haven't taken the survey yet, go to the Survey Monkey link that is in the description. Give us your feedback. It seriously is like two minutes. That's all it takes. We just want to know what you like, what you don't like, what we could do differently, what we should keep doing, yada, yada, yada. I didn't yada yada over the bisque is the best part. You get that, right? I get it. Yep. Um, so that's it. It's been episode 102 of the two-player co-op podcast. And until the next time, Sean, go ahead and take us out. Zelda's Belder. <laughs> Put it on a shirt. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you for playing. You that closed your toss. hand when it hit. <laughs> so it was like you had the right timing, but it was just like... That was, that was, that was the right... Not really. I mean... They usually end up behind me. If it hits the table We're in front in of me, I'm, pre- <laughs> I'm pretty happy if I landed on the table. Oh, God. Thanks, right. guys. My snaps suck. <laughs> I have no snaps in my headphones. Zelda's <laughs> 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 builder.